killed the mother, stabbed her in the back, chopped her head off, shot the dog under the table with a crossbow, and he's gone out, he's killed a man called Ratu with a crossbow. He's gone to his ex's girlfriend's house thinking she's involved to kill her. He's now on a murder spree. Within 10 to 15 minutes, we've got two people have been killed. We've got another one where there was a serious attempt on a young lady's life in Cecil Road in Boscombe. She'd been stabbed in the chest. And the, a further report came in of a German student who'd been shot with a crossbow bolt, also in Eifred Lane. Rennie Weigel was 15 and from West Germany. He was in Bournemouth, as so many people are, on an educational visit. In fact, uh, it's well known for its large number of language schools. He too had never encountered Lee Baker in his life before. He was walking quietly and once again, Lee Baker shoot someone at random with his crossbow. On this occasion, he wasn't badly injured and the student managed to run off uh, and get away. So he had a very lucky escape. Baker had a sort of obsession with weapons uh, and this was long standing. He was into things like samurai swords and uh, any, any, anything like that, machetes and, and all these kinds of things. The crossbow is just a, another pretty cruel kind of weapon to use. I think he had some kind of fascination with the idea of killing with a crossbow bolt, although they're not particularly ideal at making a kill in one fire. He had to follow it up with a knife anyway. So I think it was a kind of cosmetic thing that fulfilled some kind of image that he had of himself as some kind of modern day crossbow killer. Why he chose René Weigel? no one will ever know. What we do know is that Lee Baker had completely lost control of any rationality that he might have possessed. But not content just to kill, Baker began a cat and mouse game with the police as his devastating plan for the night unfolded. He was making contact with the police control room and he was speaking to somebody within the police and we were asking him to give himself up. He would then say, well, I'll be at a certain place, um, but he was never there. And this continued for, um, on a number of occasions. Bournemouth was absolutely swamped with police officers. Hampshire sent officers. All Dorset officers were called on to duty and Bournemouth was awash with the police. Instead of going home, Lee Baker goes to a friend's where he proceeds to uh, fill two milk bottles with petrol and he tears a shirt up in strips making a primitive but extremely effective Molotov cocktail. He is planning to bomb a Bournemouth petrol station. He wanted to go to the petrol station at Pokesdown Hill. It's on, on the crest of the hill and his intention was to kill the attendant if necessary, to open the petrol pumps, to tape them so that the petrol flowed down the hill, leaving them running and then he was going to light a, uh, light a match and go up in a blaze of glory taking as many residents of Bournemouth with him as he could. Um, he freely admitted that. The police were later to suggest that Baker was aping a film called Rambo First Blood. He was described in, I think it was the Sun newspaper, as a Rambo killer. And when he was told that, he, he found that amusing. Baker had this bizarre, almost film-like, cinematic image of himself as this really destructive force. And I think he has drawn the idea of um, a petrol station blowing up um, in flames um, from film imagery and he wanted to kind of reenact that. I think he probably saw himself as running away from the flames and, and shrouded with this red light. He saw himself as it were some kind of bizarre killing hero which you know it's, it's it's beyond belief 
that hurting innocent people, damaging property that had no purpose whatsoever should in any way make him a greater person. But he really did believe that that was, you know, an image he wanted. The one piece of good news in this awful story is that he didn't actually go through with the plan. Baker did not set fire to the strip of shirt torn into the top of the milk bottle containing petrol, and he didn't throw it at a petrol station. Who knows what carnage would have been created had he actually done so. He said there were far too many police. He said the area was swamped with police and he had to keep low. So the Dorset police did save a lot of lives by the injection of a large number of police officers into the area.